What's going on, everybody? It's Dev here, joined by Coach B. You know who it be. And we got some special guests today. We wanted to give these guys a shout out. Uh, Evan Safford and Brenda Montoya of uh, Help Me Hollywood. I'm stuck in New Mexico. And uh, great title, guys. by the way. Yeah. That's not, that's actually not the title, that's but uh, title. it's close though. It's uh, it's actually Help Hollywood. I'm trapped in New Mexico. But help, you know, help, help same, same idea, you know. <laughs> same no, idea. Definitely a key word. <laughs> help Hollywood. I'm trapped in New Mexico. It is a great title though. <laughs> Um, so um, I, we just want to start off by saying introduce you guys yourselves and go you know, talk a little bit about what about what you're doing in the the passion project. Sure. Well, um, I'm here. Um, I'm joined with my mother. Uh, she's really here to really um, help support me. Um, I myself, um, I'm an EDM singer songwriter. Um, I'm going after um, my dream of you know um, making an impact in the music industry for way too long now you know so finally i got my mom on board you know what i mean she's really behind me 100 percent, and really that's why she's joining the conversation um unless she's promoting a product that i don't know about i don't know are you no, i'm just you kidding she could be promoting right, some kind of <laughs> right. Know what it is. well isn't she the producer aren't you the producer of this project yes the the executive producer executive, just, uh, executive. yes oh, just, Maybe we're messing we're messing up all kinds of titles today. <laughs> it's and, okay. And, and another cool name you had, I seen it was um the people that laughed at us production. Is that something you guys <laughs> the came up with? You made fun of. Oh, the people made you made fun, fun of, of produced. Yeah, oh just kind of funny. <laughs> we got a lot of misinformation. I don't know where our information came from. Probably, probably from some Trump supporters or something. It's fake news. It's all fake it's news. Fake news. Fake news. No. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> from Breitbart or something. Right. Um, now, you know, I just had a couple of questions about the web series, like, in general. And one of my, my questions was, which episode for you guys was the best episode to make? Like, which, that you guys had fun making? Especially Evan. I really want to hear his input on this one. Oh, fun is such a, you know, um, a weird word for it, you know, because it's like watching back as the episodes, it's like, I watch it and it's like, wow, that, you know, it seems like that was like, you know, really fun. But like in the middle of it, it's like, this was hell, you know, <laughs> but um, one, one, um, one in particular is episode four. It's actually um, the most dramatic scene of the whole series. It's where um, me and my mom, uh, she basically comes to console me where basically I'm about to commit suicide and like I say the whole line, you know, I'm trapped in New Mexico, you know, and I have to cry on demand and everything. And um, at the end of it, we end up singing and she basically, you know, ends up rescuing me, you know, so, you know, easy enough to shoot, right? Um, of course it wasn't, but um, it really uh, was um, an amazing experience just because um, we both grew so much and we really were able to see what we were both made of, you know what I mean? And also, um, she was able to actually, you know, take a lot of, in a sense, um, abuse from me, in a sense, just because it's like, you know, when she was giving me a performance and like, we like, um, for instance, there was a moment where we're like, like, we were right in the middle of it. So there's a part where basically I start hitting myself and then like, she starts to, to, you know, stop me, you know? So we're like really in the moment and then sure enough, she, um, she says the wrong line. So I have to stop her. And, and, and then I'm like, you know, that's not your line. And then, you know, she starts saying again, I'm like, slow down. You know what I mean? And like the um, cinematographer's looking at me like I'm like, you know, some like abusive person. It's like, I'm not, I'm just, you know, I know the vision and like, I know what needs to be done, you know? So um, I kind of felt bad watching it back because I look like an asshole, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, um, we got a really good performance, you know what I mean? And um, it was necessary, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, we're talking about the, the necessary parts of it. I, I think that's cool. Let's talk about the behind the scenes because I, yeah. I me, I'm a, a big practical effects kind of guy. Uh, you know, like, and I understand the practicality of the, the methods that go into filmmaking and video production and all that stuff. And, you know, like, I mean, and it was funny is actually as I watched it, as I watched the series unfold, everything progressively got better and improved. Even, even the writing <laughs> departments. Um, Oh my God, there's this one line that made me laugh so hard. It was whenever, uh, <laughs> the, the, whenever you were started looking for the apartments, and that woman that was stuck up and snobby, the blonde haired chick was talking, and you looked at your mom and said, What did this bitch just say to me? And I just and you did it twice and it was so funny. I, I lost it, bro. It was great. And you know, I was gonna say is like did did the writing for it get easier? Also the the guy, the uh the gentleman, the old guy, that that 
whole episode that was just uh, maybe it was uncomfortable but like a good uncomfortable the whole episode I right mean, like, <laughs> like this that's my favorite episode yeah, it was too. creepy that was creepy that was one of them but <laughs> it is like um just for our viewers to understand because they're going to see it and give them just an update is because what the story is you basically coming back home from hollywood and you have you you got into some trouble down there is what 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 was actually the trouble that made you have to come back to mexico to new mexico the, um really what the trouble was is that i um is that i didn't um you know stop that old man um right in his tracks you know i basically put it off as like you know what it's okay um you know i'll deal with this later because that's basically what i kind of say in like episode two is like i'm like you know in Hollywood, there's some decisions that you just don't think um, that like you don't have time to think twice about. The only thing on my mind is a record deal, and basically that's exactly what happened. Is you know this guy was you know over there being really really disrespectful to me, you know be, being really just inappropriate. I should have left. I should have never stayed. But you know instead I was like whatever, freaking you know um, got ready that same night, and then you know went and freaking hit and and then you know tried to you know find my person that was going to discover me. You know what I mean? And was that five days later? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, finish. Sorry, I was just going to say, and then five days later, I come back to the place, you know, trying to just get my stuff. And of course, this man is still mad at me for me turning him down a couple of days before and literally, you know, uh, chases me out of his house with a bat and then tells the cops that, um, that I was a trespasser. And of course, I have no proof that I wasn't. And all of a sudden, I'm fucked. Everything I worked for is gone. It's all wrong, and this, you know? And this is a common, like, like you're coming back and telling because a lot of people that go down there <laughs> to Hollywood don't live to tell that story. No. You know what I mean? So coming back to tell the story is what we found interesting and was like, well, let's check this out. First, it was your mom and your your executive producer of the project that <laughs> she was coming out and liking things. And we believe in the motto over here, support equals support. So I was like, well, what do you what do you got going on? Let me figure this out. And then I seen the title, which we mistakenly mistaked at the beginning. But yeah, right. I That's see, the idea. Yeah, I seen it and I was like, yo, that is a great title. Let me check this out. So I got into it and um, I've seen the storyline. And like I said, a lot of people can't come back and tell that story because this story happens a lot. People go down there and they think, uh, I'm going to make it. I got that. And then they end up in a totally different path of life, self-destructiveness. Get and Hollywood chews you up and spits you out if you're not, you know what I mean, strong and ready for it. So how long were you down there before this, before that episode with the old man and you decided, you said, was it five days later after that happened, you came back to New Mexico? How long were you down there before all this occurred and you, you had to come back and regroup? I was there for five years. Five and, um, years? You know, I was hustling, doing good. Like, you know, I was doing really good. It's crazy in Hollywood because, like, it messes with your mind because it's like... um it's really true. If you meet just one person, it'll change your whole fucking life. You know what I mean? Right. And, and then uh, and then what ended up happening is that, um, you know, I just kept taking risk and, you know, risk would like pay off. You know what I mean? Because I had recently um, quit my job and like it ended up paying off because I ended up getting my song into a movie and then, you know, just taking risk, risk, risk. And all of a sudden I took one risk too many. And um, what's crazy is that um, that night that I was having to wait for my mom to come pick me up um, in Hollywood because, you know, literally I had nothing, you know, um, cops wouldn't let me get anything. I ended up um, hanging out. I'm going and I'm spending the night at a millionaire's house. You know what I mean? So talk about messing with your mind. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah. Even if somebody I met off, you know, just like some of the, you know, just some type of dating app, you know what I mean? Because that's how Hollywood is, you know? It makes you think that, you know, you can, you know, um, just... It's um, an illusion. It's just like yeah. the sets down there. It's an oh, illusion. Oh, God. It really is. Yeah. It's, it'll really mess with your mind, so... It makes me almost think of, like, gambling, almost, because it, it almost gets this addictive feeling that the next... Any day now, any day's the day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and if you live in that in that lifestyle, you can almost taste it. It's just tangible. It's always right there for the taking. But the story that you tell, which is you know, it actually became very heartwarming, and compelling. You know, um, because I I just felt, especially your your mo your mother's performance. I'm gonna give some shout out here to, to mom. Yeah, because, to mom. Because, she's holding it down. Yeah, you know, because the performance. She's like, look at her blushing. She's like, ah. But the performance was good though, because like the, the and both you guys' the performance, like the the relationship you guys had was it was a beautiful thing, I think, because it really told the story of like how you know you support him and you're saying you know what you can make it down here and the whole story of it is basically Evan coming to the realization that you know something I can make it without Hollywood 
in New Mexico, and I like the ending lines of this of this of the of the uh, first season, basically the web series is basically, uh, you know, New Mexico's stuck with me. I'm not stuck with New Mexico. And that's right. That's the lifestyle you got to live. Right. You know what I mean? All, all you can change is what you can change. So you know what? You said, that's fine. It's like, New Mexico, you're my bitch now. Like, this is how we're doing exactly. it. <laughs> yeah, I, definitely. I definitely I enjoyed how it progressed and, and, and seen it. Because when I first jumped on, I, gra- I guess I was in the middle of something. And we're so busy. We're doing things. So we tried to gather it. But when you send me it in a row, I was able to put it all together. And then I seen what Dev just mentioned, the progression of it and the relationship between you. So you're a co-star, too. You got, you're wearing many hats in this in this project. So yes. it's, it's very yeah. – um, and, and what me and Dev talked about, which um, I think we talked about when we first met, is like the support that you're, get, you're giving him – um, like we all mentioned, it's not a fa- it's not a failure to go out and then you don't grasp what you got. It's like changing your approach and you coming back and deciding to you pick up the camera and say, Hey man, let's just try something. Let's do it ourselves. I really like that. And I really respect it because that's what needs to be done nowadays. Like don't depend yeah. on somebody to find you. Go put that product right in front of their face, and the the grinding and and the getting it out there and going through the disappointment. It'll be much appreciated when you get that final project out there and it goes where it needs to go. Amen to that. Like 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 seriously. And you know, thank you guys because like the fact that you guys say this type of stuff is like exactly what I spent you know so many fucking wakeless nights over. Like you know, I never knew that it was going to be so hard to do this series. You know what I mean? Even I was telling my mom a couple of days ago. It's like I really thought that I could do this, but I mean, honestly, I couldn't do it on my own. You know what I mean? Like I mean, as far as you know, like the editing isn't all you know isn't all there. You know, there, there's just so many different things that you know. Um, I wish that I could have done better had I had more you know people had more resources, whatever. But at the end of the day, it, it's like um, I told myself that. I wasn't gonna. Um, I wasn't gonna just you know stop um, promoting a song, promoting a project just because it wasn't perfect anymore. Because if if I kept waiting for something to be perfect, it never was ever gonna get seen. You know what I mean? Ever. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, it is it. about that. Let me just go out there. Right. Yeah, because because you see like people like you know Post Malone. You know what I mean? Are are like, people on like you know like the like SoundCloud rappers? It's like they get you know deals right away. You know what I mean? Before even like building their like onstage. Um, persona you know what i mean so it's like you know what that stuff can you know come later let me just get the you know just like get it out there you know what i mean try to you know show people you know how hard we're working how much you know because and then you, know. you could see the growth you could see the growth in the audience your your people that your supporters can see the growth as it goes on like now yes. that you got this one under the belt you're gonna you 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 learn from your mistakes you've seen what you can make better now that's what me and Deb talk about all the time. We, if you go back and see when we started and how we started, we started in his friend's basement, then went yeah. to a like a, a, a table in the middle of my living room. Now we're built onto this, and we just keep growing. Yeah. When we look back at it, we we're like, oh my gosh! But that's what that is—just putting it out there and say, wow, look how far I came after each project that you put out. So there's nothing wrong with that. I believe that's the future of how things are going to get people get things yeah. done. Just go do it. Yeah, Just and I have to say, do too, it. do it. But anyway, no, that's also, to us, is the uh, the proof of concept, and uh, we're still growing. You know, like, to this day, every every day for me, a coach is still, like, a learning experience, you know? And, like, and I, I think that's the way everybody has to be when they're on their journey in life in general. Is like, if you're not growing, if you're not learning, if you're not doing, and, make it, and at least putting yourself out there to make those mistakes, then you're not living. You might as well be dead, right? Yeah, you, you know what I mean? You might as well be in a box, you know what I mean? Because there's... There's a lot of people out there, especially, um, you know, in our industry who have such pride and ego, you know what I mean? And and because of that, it really limits their success, you know, be, because, you know, they never want to learn anything. And, like, you always have to constantly be, be willing to learn, be willing to, you know, open your eyes, you know what I mean? Because if not, you might as well just be a dinosaur because shit is changing all the time. <laughs> you might as well you know? be a dinosaur. That's you awesome. got You got to do it. Another question, um, a scene that I thought was pretty powerful, too, because you, you mentioned it a couple of times and then when, he, when it was shot is with – your stepdad you, it, you you felt like he didn't have support for you and i guess my question is how did that relationship between mom executive producer you know what i mean co-star, co-star how did that work through the whole process was there was there a, 
Was the support coming from him too? I know we've seen that scene where he finally came out and gave you some words of encouragement that you were looking for. That was for. an actor, by the way, too. That oh, was he's an actor. Dad. Yeah. Oh, that was interesting. <laughs> but did that yeah. happen? Though? Yes. Um, the the like, actual scene and everything it actually did yeah. it did yeah. it was like one of those times where it was like you know right after everything had happened and like you know i was just used to him because he's he's always been really hard on me you know and he's um he's a really practical type of person you know um you need to go out there and get money you know do this you know don't you know think out of you know out of the box too much and it was one of those times where i just was you know just trying to tell him what he wanted to hear i was you know just saying basically um you know i'm not going to be singing anymore and then it was just like straight up you know don't say that you know oh you, you know, I'm wasting your time singing, and it was like, well, you know what I mean, like, like, like really, you know. So I had to put that in the web series because um, no, it was beautiful. just um, a moment that changed, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, it was like powerful. It was especially, a powerful yeah. scene. Yeah, especially having a guy that you think doesn't approve of your lifestyle, and then you, and then you know, you're you're worried about it. From I believe it's like episode four, you're worried about uh, you know, like what he's going to say, and then when you finally get to that point, he's like, oh, and by the way, um. I don't want you to quit because you would say that you because the expectation was you, you you knew that that's what he was you thought that's what he wanted but really it was uh, you're the horse to bet on you know you yeah know I mean? yeah he said that did that cause and, any friction between all three of you guys when this process was going on all through it because i know there's a lot of things that were involved outside of just making this project um did it cause any friction between you guys's relationship where you're just like you know what i mean going at it a, a lot well, <laughs> well well i i i can say something to this um i think that by helping um with this project and helping evan put himself back together um it helped me put myself back together because i had a really hard time when he was out there too because it was it was it was it was very very sad and, and scary for me, um, and so um, get a little bit choked up. But um, my husband saw that, and he wasn't necessarily behind it, um, but he saw that it changed me. And even like today, the reason I'm able to do this is last night we had a real late night premiere. He drove all night so that we could, I could get up in the morning and continue to drive. That's how he supported us. Wow. He's awesome. made sure to show up and to do the things that are necessary to do and then just kind of walk away. But he's excited. He's excited for what, where this is going to take Evan. And he's real, real proud of him too. Like I am. Real awesome. Proud. You're lucky, Evan. You're very lucky because there's a lot of people that won't get that support. Um, oh, yeah. And I've seen in it, too, another question. I've seen in there that there was some kind of drug. It was a drug addiction and activity that um, may be involved in some of the issues that you were having, not just in trying to make it in Hollywood, but just in life in general and your relationship mm -hmm. with your parents. Um, is mm -hmm. that correct? Is that something that you... No, no, that's, 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 that's definitely touched on it. And um, I did... I did want to mention it in the series and 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 like make it you know um, a kind of ongoing thing just because you know uh, drugs is such a big thing in our culture right now you know it affects everything you know what I mean and um, and you know um, some of it did and um, and like episode one we kind of start off our fight it's like basically because I wanted to, to stop and get some weed you know and like so I tell her I'm like it's not like I was asking for a line of coke you know I just didn't want to you know I just wanted to forget for a minute that I had to come back here you know what I mean kind of you know justifying you know because you know yeah. Yeah, it's a tough battle when it comes to that stuff. So how are you doing with that at this time in, in life? Um, I wish I wish that I could say that I was, you know, um, 100 percent, you know, n um, not away from, you know, like away from it. But it's just because it's just everywhere in our culture. You know what I mean? Um, but but at the same time, um, I think that I've been able to do it so that I don't I don't do it with that mindset that um, it's um, it is who I am, because some people when they do like certain substances, they kind of put it on themselves. So they're like, oh, well, if I do this, that means that, you know, I can't be successful. I can't be a good person. I have to be a thief. I have to be this. And like, for me, I changed my mindset completely. It's like, just because I do this stuff does not mean that, you know, I can't be who I want to be and still continue to strive and try to, you know what I mean? 
just be, just be the best. I appreciate the honesty. I appreciate the honesty. You know, a lot of people would have tried to shake that question off, but these are things you're going to have to deal with if you plan on, you know, growing with this and pushing this and being successful at it. Those are the questions you're going to get. So I appreciate mm -hmm. the honesty and being real about it because that is a tough struggle to go through. I know it is a tough struggle for mom as a parent to watch you go through that and then mm -hmm. and, and to still still have that support because if you've been in that lifestyle you know you know that a lot of people don't have that type of support so you're truly blessed they turn their backs on you yeah they, they, they lots of people will you know turn their backs on you immediately you know and it's like it's it's a real um like you know mental problem just like you know um alzheimer's or something you know what i mean or um cerebral palsy you know what i mean it is a disease you know so Right. So out there in Hollywood, did you meet any? What's who? Who's the most famous person you ran into that we would probably <laughs> like the crowd or, or like our audience or we might know? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay. So, l l let me think about one that's uh, that's you know kind of PG thirteen rated because I don't want to you know. Kind of, <laughs> oh, so you ran into porn stars? Hey, we don't have to be PG thirteen. Well, nah, nah, nah. You can say some porn star names. <laughs> um. So I remember, um, so, um, there was uh, Andy Dick. I remember I was, um, um, uh, on like Hollywood Boulevard and like, um, I was uh, rolling really hard on ecstasy and like, I like, I, I went up to him and like, you know, I gave him a big old hug and like, you know, I was like, I wrote a song about you. And he's like, um, you know, you wrote a song about me. And then he was trying to take me home for a minute, you know, but thankfully my friends took me away. Cause you know, I love Andy Dick, but I probably shouldn't be going home with it, you know, just cause like, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Andy Dick is a wow. Firecracker. Yeah. <laughs> he is a firecracker, man. That, that was the, the G rated version. <laughs> that was the G That's rated version. Yes. Wait a second. Are you, so wait, are you telling me that whole scene with you in that guy's house? Was that Andy Dick? Was that supposed no. to be him? <laughs> was, that, was that supposed to be him? I was, yeah. no, I was sitting there. I was thinking, was the, guy, was the guy that you actually stayed at his house in the, in the web series, was he actually an old guy? Or was he like some younger dude? Or. He was about probably about early or, or, or about late thirties, and like he had um, a really like strong accent from I'm like assuming like Nigeria or something. You know what I mean? So okay. so he wasn't that old at all, honestly. No. No, but then you guys found the old guy to play the actor because I like I said that guy. I, I want to give some shout out to all your actors that you guys had played in this <laughs> because you know I mean they all did like a, a decent job. Especially like I said, especially him, man. He really sold the creepy rule, man. Like yeah. <laughs> He is like, not creepy at all. Yeah, he's such a guy in real life. Like, like yeah. I had to, um, yeah, yeah, right. And um, um, it was a lot of me, you know, just trying to get him, like, you know, into that mindset. You know, um, I was like, you know, it's like, you know, um, and uh, thankfully he was comfortable doing it. You know, with like the whole, like, you know, opening up his jacket and just being like, you know, so sexually aggressive. You know, I, you know, talking about him about his, like, you know, motivation for it. You know what I mean? Because I didn't want it to look fake. You know what I mean? Because you know, with acting, it's all about your body language. Your, you know, your, um, your eyes, of course, but also what you're thinking too, because if you're not thinking about what you're saying, it comes across to the audience, you know, it's like, you're not really, you know, believe what you're saying. So there was a lot that was into that. So thankfully he was, was comfortable enough of, to do that. You don't believe it? Am I supposed to believe you? You don't believe right. it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, so right. Method, method there, acting, huh? Filming it too. <laughs> so it was a, it was a lot of work, but the guy is uh, really a, just a real, sweet kind of timid guy but evan so is amanda evan, the one girl from who like uh who's all snotty in real life like you know um we had a coach like right in there you know to like be more of a bitch it's like you know because she was so customer service you know being all nice it's like no baby uh people who um who are snotty really don't have that much energy you know what i mean yeah, so so just being you know cold you know yeah, yeah right all <laughs> right that by the way, would that would um, uh, you know, I have the video playing in the background as we're talking. That part came up, and I was like, "You guys were talking." I totally zoned out for a solid two minutes because I was just picturing the whole conversation again. Because that, I, I tell you what, I'm gonna grab that snippet from that episode and post it on our on our page because that snippet of that scene is amazing. Like that's 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 my free little ad outside of this to you guys because I love that scene. <laughs> so I mean, mine, mine, mine was mine the was first also. Oh, that was the first scene you guys shot? The, the it, scene... Evan? Yep. What was yeah. your favorite one you were saying, though? Oh, yeah, the okay. scene that jumped out to me also, too, outside of the movement that I kind of found of money is when mom called your, like, arch nemesis from high school, from, like, acting <laughs> class, Ratchet. 
She called him ratchet. <laughs> way ratchet. Out ratchet hair. And you already you already talked your way into getting the apartment, and mom comes in like, listen here. <laughs> <laughs> You're back. I was, You're I was no set up. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. I, you yeah, know what? I would have fucked Hollywood's butt if I could have. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was mad at somebody. You know, Why? somebody was to get it. Yeah, yeah. So you're about to be down in Hollywood and you'd have somebody going, Somebody get Brenda. She's making this <laughs> scene down here. Somebody go right. get Brenda. But, um, yo, know, this was something I wanted to ask you guys about because, Evan, you told me that you went through the process of editing everything, right? You did all the. Um, editing and uh, for the the cuts and the work and all that, right? There was no help with that. I finally learned how to outsource some of it to uh, to some gentlemen in in um, in uh, Pakistan, and I actually give him credit. His name is um, is is a honey. So he sent me some of the scenes, kind of like you know, um, so that they were kind of you know ch you know chalked up um, a little bit. But honestly, no, it was all me. You know what I mean? Because um, he. I don't think that he had seen as many, you know, movies as, or, you know, just those like the, like, you know, tone that like American films have. So he helped, you know, but no, I had to go back and I had to do all of it. Honestly, it was me locked in my house for a month, you know, yes. not like no, going outside, staying up all night, you know, like. I, I know the struggle because I just know when I first started doing video editing, it was a challenge because like I said, it was tutorial after tutorial after tutorial. Like we had a conversation, I believe before this, where I said about it, you know, we're like, I, like you said, a month, months in my house, just learning things and you know, all the, all the tricks of the trade and mm -hmm. all the books and stuff. And you know, like, and watching your stuff, um, I would be happy to give you guys some like, uh, some tips and some pointers and stuff because I, you know, I mean, just listening to it, I knew there was ways that. I could improve the quality of it. It was it was phenomenal. But I wanted to know, like, for you, was it a good personal growth thing to get that perspective of learning how to edit? Like, you know, what other people in that in the particular field do? I if I would have known how much work that it takes to do all of it, I mean of course I still would have done it anyways. But I mean Jesus, I, I never knew that, you know, it was gonna take as much time as, as it took to shoot it to edit it. I wish I would have known that. But that's not that I could edit maybe like, you know, in like a week's time, you know what I mean? But no, I was in here, you know, um, I'm, 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 I'm just now starting to, uh, starting to get my like, uh, uh, sleep, uh, sleep schedule back on track because for like the past month, I've been going to bed about eight o'clock every morning, waking up at four o'clock in the afternoon. You know what I mean? Cause that's just what it was with the, with the editing, you know, mm -hmm. barely seeing the sun, you know what I mean? So, I, I've um, been in that next time I really want some help, you know, please next time I really want to, you know, I need some help, you know? I don't yeah, want to yeah, do it all the time, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Like I said, well, we have we have a business for that. But um, I was actually telling your mom about it though. Was um, before before we started, uh, just talking. What what was I saying to you about the editing process? Um, I lost my train of thought on it. You you were saying that it was um, that you worked really hard. It was like tutorial after tutorial, and it took a long. It took a lot of effort. It took a lot of uh, learning on your part to learn different things, and it took a lot of time. For yeah. you to, that's yeah. what you were talking to me about. Right, right, right. But before the show, I think I was saying something about story. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, I, I just came back to me. Evan, what I was saying was, I was talking to your mom right before the show started, but I didn't want to get too in depth until you were here. But a lot of a lot of people will tell you that filming is actually the you know, kind of like the exactly. easy part where you're just gathering footage. And then editing is the part where you have to put everything together to make you take, tell the story. You have to take what you have. You have to take what you have and make a story out of it. You have to make the oh cuts that make God. the story and everything else. I mean, trust me. When I think about making films, I think about how many different camera angles I'm going to have to film right. from and how many different shots I'm going to need. I mean, I you know you gotta make a shot list and then a, a screenplay and it's it's crazy. And that's something too. I mean, how how was the screenwriting for you guys? I mean, you know. Did you guys like have like a lot of screenwriting or anything like that? Um, um, I did. I mean, cause, yeah, because I wrote all the screens um, writing, and yeah, you, you're totally right. I mean, because not only is there shot list, but then you have to do um, um, setups for where you want your cameras and stuff to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then plus, uh, especially because I had such um, I had such a clear vision of like how I wanted it to be. So then you know I shot it like that. So then I have to go through the footage, and then like when I couldn't like you know find the exact one. That I wanted to use it would drive me fucking crazy because it's like I knew because I knew that I shot it, you know. But then it's like I had to freaking put it together. It. So then, <laughs> yeah, so then um, eventually I'm just over there, you know, beating myself up because I'm just like oh. I just wasted time, wasted time. And like honestly, there were so many different scenes, uh, monologues, really important scenes that we worked really hard on. That like honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't do it in there because I had it because um, the show had a deadline for the Emmys, 
And like, you know, mm. if we wouldn't have submitted for the Emmys, then, you know, everything else wouldn't have worked. So we yeah, took that- out a lot, honestly. My mom was really sad. My, um, my stepdad was really sad too, because, you know, there was just scenes that, you know, were, 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 that, we were, that, that we were totally hard on, but it was just impossible for me to do, you know? Yeah, it there really just fine. wasn't enough oh time. My God. I, what I, did you shoot okay. it on? What did you shoot it with? Um, so I heard about um, um, this independent film called Tangerine, where uh-huh. they um, won a bunch of independent film student awards, and they shot it on an iPhone. So that's what I shot you it shot on. shot it on an iPhone. So this is all shot on an iPhone. I like it. All it now this. I like it even more because yeah. it's the grind. You got to do. You got to work yes. with what you got with. Low budget, don't have a lot to work with, and you made it happen. I like it. That was my curiosity. I was sitting here looking at it, and I was like, what did they shoot this with? You know what I mean? What did you, what did you have, like a selfie stick or something? Or, <laughs> yeah, right. A holder for the, um, a holder for a the tripod. A, um, a tripod, a monopod. Yep. We tried the little stands to like, try to do because um, – we um we wanted some of the scenes like take place in the car, but that was impossible with like you know trying to get this you know stuff and um so yeah it was just a lot of uh, me breaking down the freaking tripod you know shooting out of windows you know um, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do this is this is a great story honestly I like I just, it I I start laughing because I just I'm so glad someone else knows the pain of like editing because you just think about <laughs> how you lost clips and you couldn't find things and you just wish you could and, and it was it was good it made me feel better. I think I'm gonna start going to therapy for it honestly because yeah. yeah. I still have a lot of demons of that, like a lot of nightmares I've been having of editing. I'm just like, no, where's that no. scene? You know, I'm trying to slow it down. <laughs> Where is it? Slow mo. Oh, cut. Make a cut here. Make a cut there. Oh, it's not the right cut. No. Oh, I lost the clip. Oh, rendering and rendering. Oh, we can't forget rendering. Oh, it takes so much time. Oh, Why can't God. I put this in? Oh, because you're not done. Yeah, it takes forever for that. I'm like, yeah, is that done yet? I don't even know. Dev put me hip to it, and then I started to have compassion because. When he started, we started, I was like, well, let me see how you do it, trying to learn some things about doing it. And I was like, nah, you can have that job. I want nothing right, to right. do with that. <laughs> I'll come up That's with some good. ideas, and we'll just try to work with that, Dev. You're, you're good on that. But um, another question. Um, I seen you did something like you like the support from the LGBTQ community. How is that? Are, you, are you getting a lot of support from them? Uh, it was amazing. Actually, just yesterday, um, what, what was it yesterday? Oh no, uh, two days ago, I was able to um, to to perform at a Pride out here, um, and um, it was great. Um, one of the things that I said is, um, I was like, um, I told her, I was like, I've been holding a secret for now for more than twenty years, you know, but now I'm finally ready to get it off my chest. I'm not gay. I love who I love, you know, um, but um, I don't put a label on myself. So they were kind of disappointed because I think they wanted me to say that I was gay, but I was like, no, 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 <laughs> I'm not going to you know, say anything that's going to make it so that we are going to be segregated anymore in this world. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't want to be segregated by, you know, our freaking sexuality, our race, our, you know, you know, nothing at all. You know what I mean? So that's, but, that's, but, that's actually a really um, cool perspective. The crowd did love it, you know? You live yeah. in your truth. You got to respect that. That's what one thing we support is living your truth, no matter what it is. You know what I mean? You got to live that mm-hmm. because that's the only way you're going to be happy and get to where you need to go. I'm into that. Yep. It really is true. Yes. yes. All right. Honestly, I'm I'm just about out of questions, guys. Like I said, you guys are have been absolutely positively terrific. And like I said, I, I the one thing I do have left for myself and Coach, you have anything else? Uh, no, nah, that's pretty much all I got. That's all I got on that. I have what? a little, like, a little support thing of saying, like, do your thing. You guys, I, I mean, once we, I found, came across it and looked through all of it, I'm glad I did. It's, it's a motivational thing. Thank I know it's something that. that we're going to be doing down the line and just keep grinding it out. And maybe, hopefully, we can figure out how a way we can collab with you in um, we will. Series we will. 2 or something. Maybe we can get in on an episode figure something out and just get creative together oh how do you guys do the editing please do the editing for me for god's <laughs> sake <Like, laughs> uh, right well i was my what my final thing was going to be was that i wanted to ask you what are the plans for the future you know i mean you said you're um, in the music production and everything else so i mean is it going to be create some more music make another uh web series you know the second web series the second season of this web series or what are you guys plans for the future well, I just released the actual uh, main song from the show called Forever Free. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, right now, um, I'm, I'm planning is to uh, really uh, use this time because um, today, I, um, uh, today I, I cannot officially campaign for the Emmy anymore. 
So I have to wait till uh, actually July 16th to see if I'm nominated. But either way, I'm just going to be promoting the song. I'm, I'm about to get the uh, actual video out there. And then from there, I'm just going to be also um, releasing more music from the show too, just to kind of uh, mm -hmm. keep that momentum kind of going with there. But um, the plan is, is that um, within the next couple of months after I get enough people to um, notice the music, I'm going to ask them all to buy a certain song at a certain date so that I can um, try to um, crack on the on 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 the Billboard Hot 100, you know, because I figure if I can do that, then it's like I can show them that, you know, I was able to do it by myself you know, or, you know, um, without any help in a sense. So that this way, maybe, you know, I can get some real people to actually back me. You know what I mean? You know, so. I like the scheme that you're saying, like, like coordinate, make a coordination call like, hey, everybody buy this around this time. You know, exactly. it's, smart. It's, it's 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 a it's a crowdfunding smart way to do it kickstarter it's basically a kickstarter right well like i said um to everybody who will be watching this um again i want to thank you for stopping by and watching and like i said leave a like and a comment for these guys um please go check it out uh help uh help, why, why do i keep screwing up help hollywood i'm trapped in new mexico uh please please go look this look at this show um we will have a link in the description above your head here above us so go ahead and click that and go watch this and I know people may look at the quality of this show and say something about it, but honestly, it is a truly, not just heartwarming, but funny. It's a it's a slice of life, really. It really is. I mean, every part of this is a slice of life, from, you know, the passion to do the project on, you know, an iPhone, to the <laughs> the writing, to the work and editing that was put in, to, the, you know, the motherly love here from the executive <laughs> producer, the acting, everything. I mean, it, this, this, whole, this whole web series is a little slice of life. And you really need to go see it and watch it, you know. And like I said, leave them some love there and subscribe to their channel. And like I said, we'll keep you guys in the fold with these cats because, like Coach said, some things we might have, we're going to have some plans planned out for sure. So um, We definitely do. All right, that's it for me, guys. Bridging the Gap, we are out of here. Everybody take care of yourselves. Stay beautiful. See you later. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you.